Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm Juliet and thank you for joining me for my chakra balancing practice today. Together, let's clear out what no longer is serving us and make room for what will. In this practice, we will work with all seven chakras, which will help you to resolve any negativity holding you back, so you can become a lighter, brighter and happier version of yourself. So first chakra we will start to work on today, Muladhara or Root Chakra. Working with Muladhara Chakra will help you to determine if you are always in survival mode or on guard and will help you to move in more peaceful, balanced and safe state. Healthy and balanced Muladhara Chakra will provide you with safety, stability, physical power, sexuality and a lot of life energy. However, imbalanced Root Chakra can cause a lot of physical imbalances in a lower body. So let's begin our practice by stepping into the plank pose, waking up entire body, flow through to your upward facing dog and then we will meet in the downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, it's a great asana to wake up entire body. Together let's dive back to the plank, then upward facing dog and back to the downward facing dog. Hopefully you're getting warmer now. So the first asana for Muladhara Chakra we will practice today is the crescent lunge. So take your right leg up, activate your core and make your way to your crescent lunge or Anjani Asana. It is a very dynamic standing yoga asana, which integrates all the muscles in your lower body. Step back to your plank now, then upward facing dog and then back to the downward facing dog. We will repeat the crescent lunge from the other side now. So bring your left leg up and step forward in between your hands to your crescent lunge. Stay strong, steady and use your breathing. Crescent lunge, straighten the hip flexor and therefore stimulating the root chakra. So let's make a transition back to the dumbbell facing dog. Let's keep working on our root chakra. And the next thing we will practice is a warrior one, warrior two flow. Take your right leg up and step forward to your warrior one or your up head rest in the one. Stand on your mat with your feet 3-4 feet apart and your back foot turned about 45 degrees in. Keep connecting firmly with the ground. On exhalation, open your arms and align them with your shoulders. Keep stretching your arms away from the midline. On exhalation, flow back to your warrior one. Take a good breath and open up to the warrior two. Feel stability in those legs and feet. We will repeat this flow one more time. Move gracefully, warrior one, and then warrior two again. Warrior flow builds a great stability in the lower back, legs and feet, providing strong foundation and strength for entire body. So let's make a transition back to the downward facing dog. Rest for a couple of breaths and repeat this flow from the other side. The root chakra is a foundation for safety, stability and the trust. Therefore, it's very important to keep connection with the earth. So let's step forward for the warrior one. Take a big sweep and extend those arms. Keep on breathing steady and connect with the earth. On exhalation, open your arms to your warrior two position. Gaze forward and keep those arms engaged. Keep your spine long and your shoulders aligned over the hips. Let's make a transfer back to the warrior one. Flow back to the warrior two now. Breathe steady and visualize a really red color at the base of your tailbone. Let's repeat this flow one more time. Cultivate feelings of being grounded and being safe. Take your energy from the earth and you will call on your root chakra for the strength and determination. Great work, guys! So now we feel more grounded. So let's make our transition through the plank, upward dog and back to the downward facing dog. We are ready to start to work on our second chakra, Svadhisthana or Sacral Chakra. This area of the body relates to any creative relationship, including sexual relationships. So let's step forward to our low lunge and start to work on our hip openers. Hip openers offer deep release, which can be very helpful when dealing with resentment, anger or blame that surfaced when we work with this chakra. Holding this low lunge, make sure that your hips are squared and you are not cross-crossing your knees. 
and let's slowly take our right arm inside that right knee and go for the gentle half spinal twist. Now take your left arm outside of that right knee and go for another half spinal twist. Very good work. So now let's come back to the center and sweep those arms up and allow your body to melt a little bit deeper into that lunge. So now step back to your plank and make your transfer to your downward facing dog. And we're gonna be ready to start this flow from the other side. Reach that leg up and step forward right in between your hands. Let's find ourselves in a low lunge. So find good alignment and start to work on the loosen up your upper body. And maybe roll your shoulders a couple times and make sure that your facial expression is soft and just let yourself to melt. Trust your body and allow yourself to relax even deeper and deeper with each and every exhalation. So let's begin our half spinal twists in our low lunge from the one side and then go ahead and reverse it. Working with Fatkistana Chakra, always ask yourself a question. Am I feeling free in my ability to love and express myself? Or something is burdening me. I feel resentment, anger or blame towards myself or towards anyone else. Working with Second Chakra can help us to find the balance in the relationships with ourselves or with others. Wonderful job, guys! So let's come back to our downward facing dog. And we will find perfect alignment, we will rest, recover and get ready for the next flow. Take a few breaths in your downward facing dog and find that peace and comfort within. And then slowly make your transfer to your seated position. So let's begin next flow as a preparation for the Paschimottanasana or seated forward fold. Inhale and keep your torso long, then lean forward from your hip joints. So let's repeat this flow for a few times now and making sure while you fold in forward, you lengthen in your tailbone away from the back of your pelvis. Very good job, guys. So now let's practice a longer hold. So take another deep inhalation and fold forward again. Hold onto the sides of your feet with your elbows fully extended. If this isn't possible, then bend your knees slightly or use a strap around your feet. With each inhalation, slightly lift and lengthen in your torso. With each exhalation, further release into the forward bend. Beautiful settled hold, guys. So now, let's bring our one leg close or inside to our groin area or to the full half lotus and we will fold forward to that seated forward fold again. Half lotus forward fold will give Svathistana Chakra an excellent massage which will help to activate and awake that energy center. So now, slowly take the same leg and bring it back to the half hero pose and then fold forward again. Half hero forward fold provides a powerful stretch to the front of the thighs and increases flexibility in the knees, hips and spine. So let's hold this asana for a few more slow, nurturing, settled breathing cycles. So let's come back to the seated forward fold again. Reach all the way overhead and dive forward. Take your time and slowly come back to the seated position and let's begin this flow from the other side. Put your foot close or inside into your groin area for the full half lotus pose and then dive forward for a seated forward fold. Again, that soft pressure of your foot into your pelvic organs provide an excellent massage for your second energy center or Svadhisthana Chakra. While you're focusing on the Svadhisthana Chakra, visualize the bright orange color. Let's transfer this leg back to the half hero pose and then slowly, gently, with care and good spinal alignment, dive forward again. The energy of sacral chakra stirs desires, feelings and emotions and the society we live in 
does not encourage us to be ourselves and to live and express our emotions. So from a very early age, we have to repress our emotions and desires, and working on this chakra will help us to release those. When your sacral chakra is balanced, you are a very radiant and exuberant person, free, happy and spontaneous, with a lot of creative energy. However, when this chakra is unbalanced, you may experience lack of creativity, lack of motivation, emotional confusion. We are slowly moving up to the spine and it's time to bring an attention to our third energy center or Manipura Chakra. Manipura Chakra stabilizing the foundation of the physical, mental and emotional body. Manipura Chakra properties bravery, strength, confidence, self-esteem, nurturing emotions, trust and responsible for your own decision, empowerment and of course manifestation. All the yoga asanas connected with the center of your body or the solar plexus will help us to activate and improve the functioning of this energy center. So make a slow rotation in your half kamukhasana or half cow pose. Make sure that your rotation starts in the center of your body in the solar plexus in your Manipura Chakra. Of course, all chakras are interconnected and by working on one specific energy center, we definitely have an impact on all other chakras. So let's repeat this flow from the other side now. Seated spinal twist pose in a half cow face pose is a very effective asana for the third energy center or Manipura as well as for Anahata Chakra which we're gonna talk a little bit later. People with weak solar plexus chakra see themselves as the victims. They pessimistically walk with their heads down and very often put up with a poor treatment. They have a low expectations and low aspirations. They very shy and rarely take a leadership role, but they quickly and sarcastically can put others down. People who feel that their ideas and words are never heard and always ignored most likely have a significant imbalance in their solar plexus chakra. By concentrating your attention on healing this chakra, you can overcome shyness. And your solar plexus chakra can be activated not only when you practice the right and correct asanas, but as well when you master the courage to do something what scares you, speak up yourself, and exert your willpower in self-control. So let's reach up now and settle for a few more nurturing breaths in our seated forward fold. So we're ready to begin to work on our forest energy center or Anahata Chakra. Let's begin our reverse table top flow. Move slowly with a full attention and intention inside your heart. Anahata Chakra carries energies of compassion, unconditional love and forgiveness. It is also how we feel self-compassion and unconditional love towards ourselves and then of course share it with others. So lie on your back, bend your knees and bring your heels towards your sitting bones. Situbhanihasana. Press your feet into your mat and lift your pelvis towards the ceiling. Press your feet in your upper arms into the mat and squeeze your thighs towards one another. Release the hips to rest and then repeat. Keep lengthening your tailbone towards your knees and keep your chin over your chest. Rest and repeat one more time. Consider your Anahata Chakra or Force Energy Center at the bridge between the lower chakras and the upper chakras. Close your eyes. Focus on the spaciousness in your heart and visualize deep, bright green color. Slowly release your hips and let's give our knees a good quality hug to release the tension from your back. Keep attention in your heart and focus on the joy and peace. So let's make a transition to our knees and we will begin the next flow, next dynamic flow for our force energy center or Anahata Chakra. Move dynamically and energetically 
with a calm and settled mind. Since the heart chakra connecting the lower and upper chakras, in the words this chakra is acts at the center of integration of earthy matters and higher aspirations. So by working on understanding and balancing our heart chakra, we will bring in our life more joy, more peace, more kindness, more patience, love, harmony, clarity, compassion, purity, and understanding. On the other side, people with a weak heart chakra can appear overly defensive and have a hard time to be able to forgive others. They can have an excessive isolation and a big fear of intimacy, very close down. So it's really important to bring attention to our heart and first develop love towards ourselves and then love towards others. As we experience opening of the heart chakra, we also experience a deeper understanding of love and connection. Let's start to come out and we will make a transfer on our knees. Let's focus on our face energy center or Vishuddha chakra. Vishuddha chakra is all about experiencing the inner truth and choosing the right words to reveal the truth. Speak and listen attentively with compassion. Speaking your highest truth doesn't mean you are allowed to be hurtful or critical. The truth from your heart, your spiritual essence, has to come across as a kind and compassionate truth. In ancient wisdom, there are three gateways you should cross before you are speaking. First, ask yourself, is what am I about to say true? If so, proceed to the second gateway and ask, is what I am about to say necessary? And if so, and the answer is yes, go to the third gateway and ask yourself, is what I am about to say kind? Speaking your highest truth, that means speak kindly. Roaring Lion Pose is an excellent asana to activate the throat chakra. Tone the back of your throat and exhale forcefully through your mouth, sticking your tongue out. Very powerful to activate the passive throat chakra. Bring your forehead on the ground and rest in your child pose. At the same time, we will start to work on our sixth energy center or Ajna chakra, third eye. The third eye chakra is the energy center in our body, which is responsible for reality, perception, manifesting, thoughts, and intuition. When you have a clear and harmonious third eye chakra, you are calm, self-aware, and possess foresight. You are not controlled or limited by the mind, and you find it easy to distinguish truth from illusion. As we experience the opening of the eye chakra, we also experience a deeper understanding of love, humility, and self-consciousness. One of the gifts of the third eye chakra is seeing both inner and outer worlds. And the energy of this chakra helps us to experience clear thoughts and the gift of self-reflection. The crown chakra represents the soul in its aspect of perfect being. Sahasrara chakra is the one of the seven chakras. The lower chakras store and distribute physiological and mental energies that can be directed towards the sixth or Ajna chakra and then ultimately released at the crown chakra. An imbalance of the crown chakra leads to spiritual distress, feeling disconnected spiritually. If your crown chakra is blocked, you might experience isolation and loneliness and inability to connect with others. On exhalation, lift both feet away from the floor at the same time even if it means bending your knees. Turn your upper thighs slightly inward and press your feet actively towards the sky. Do this pose close to the wall at first, which will keep you safe should you lose your balance. Also, keep in mind that you should place very little weight on your head. Instead, use the strings of your arms, shoulders and core. Sahasrara Chakra this chakra is a gateway to enlightenment, the place where it is no longer possible to experience yourself as separate 
from anyone or anything. The cosmic energy enters the body, then descends down the spine through the chakras and nervous system to fulfill our needs. Thank you for joining my chakra practice today. And Namaste.